Hi, welcome back to Code Station 33. Today we are talking about introduction to programming and Arduino code. We are still looking at Unit 3 decision making, and today we are going to look at else and else if. You might recall in the last lesson we were talking about if conditionals. If something is true, then do a series of statements that we have told the computer to carry out. In our code this time, let me transition so you can see the our monitor. There we go. We are going to use the else and else if structure. So let me give you an example. If x is greater than 3, then print something to the screen that says, hey, x is greater than 3. Else, in other words, otherwise, print something to the screen that says x is not greater than 3. So that's the example of the else. The else if gets a little bit more complicated because sometimes a single conditional test is not enough to make our decisions work in our computer program. So here's the basic structure for an if else. We start with the if command, and then we have our conditional test like we did before. We put our curly brackets, and then we have as many statements as we need to have. Oh, I'm missing some curly brackets. There should be a curly bracket right here at the end of the statement. Then we're gonna say an else, and then a, another curly bracket. Let me fix this now. So this time, again, we have our Arduino, and it has nothing connected to it because we're really just going to do code, and we're going to look at our serial monitor to see the output. I'm going to run this. It's just going to do straight output. It's not asking for any information. We're not giving any information onto the board. So I'm going to hit start simulation. And you can see it says 0, 1, 2. It's counting up. 3. Let me see if I can make this bigger. There we go. 4. When it gets to 5, it says equal to 5. And bigger than five. All right, so let's kind of go through and explore what's going on in this code. Hi, my serial monitor. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm setting up some a piece of data up here at the top. It's a test value to keep track of the value that I am testing. Then I'm going to set uh, my LED bulletin to output. It's actually left over. I don't need to do that because I'm not using the LED pin. So we could delete that if we wanted to. Unnecessary. Then the important one is my serial begin 9600. That is going to give my serial monitor the ability to send information back and forth. Next, I am going to do my loop. So this is the part that's going to repeat over and over again. And I did two different kinds of conditionals in here. First, I printed out some dotted lines and I printed the, the actual value of test value so we could know what was going on. And then I'm going to check to see if test value is greater than 5. If it's bigger than 5, we're going to say test value is bigger than 5. So if it's not bigger than 5, then it'll never say this statement here in this line of code. So that's our traditional conditional. Then I have another conditional here that says if test value is less than 5, print test value is less than 5 for all other cases. Now let's think about this. What is the other cases? Well, any case where test value is not less than 5, which would be test value is greater than or equal to 5. So that's what I said in my result for my else. Either test value is equal to 5 or it's bigger. The problem with this is it doesn't ever let us know in this conditional whether it is equal to 5 or bigger than 5. We don't know that. All we know is for sure is when it's less than 5. 
if it's equal to 5 or bigger, we'll never know which one it is. So if we go down here again where I wrote better, in this one, it's going to tell us when is it bigger than 5. That's our first conditional. If it's not bigger than 5, we know it's going to be less than or equal to. So we're going to check to see if it's less than 5. If it's less than 5, we're going to say that. And then finally, if it's not bigger than 5, and it's not less than 5, then of course it must be equal to 5. And then down here at the bottom, I increment a test value. So test value is going to keep counting up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 in this loop. And I put a nice little delay of 3,000. Remember, that 3,000 is in milliseconds, so it's really just 3 seconds. And then I did some kind of funny stuff down here. This is a way to get some line breaks in. It's called an escape character. We will talk more about those later. So we open our serial monitor. I'm going to clear it, and we're going to run it again. And now we kind of have a better idea of what's going on with our code. The first time through, it doesn't say anything for the first conditional. Uh, it says test is less than 5 for the second, and then it says test is less than 5 for the third. And we can see as it travels through, we're up to 3 now, we're up to 4. The one that's going to change when we get to 5 is this one says it's equal to or 5, and the next one says it's equal to 5. Then all of a sudden it's bigger than 5, and we also get that first condition now coming back in to say test value is bigger than 5. So now we have all three conditionals firing. The first one says test value is bigger than 5. The second one says test value was either equal to 5 or bigger. And then the last one says the correct value that test value was definitely bigger than 5. And in fact, it's always said the correct value. So if we do this again and run it and pay attention to them each individually, we know the first conditional is not happening. And it's not going to happen until we get to 5. The second conditional is going to stay less than 5 until we equal 5. So let's watch for that. 4. 5. There we go. It's equal to or bigger than 5. Now that first conditional comes in, and then the second conditional that has the else is still saying equal to or bigger than 5. And then finally, again, let's look at the last one and pay attention particularly to this last line. Less than 5. 1 is less than 5. 2 is less than 5. 3 is less than 5. 4 is less than 5. 5 is less than 5. Well, oh, 5 is equal to 5. What am I saying? 6 is now bigger than 5. 7 is now bigger than 5. So we can kind of see how this is working. When you're building this on your own, you really just need to put a Arduino onto the screen. You don't need to do anything else to it. You don't need to add any components to it. And in the code, you're going to get the code from our uh, code resource section. And then you're going to use that and just explore it. Feel free to change values. Feel free to explore with this a little bit. So that is all I have for you today. Good luck, and we'll see you next time.